and welcome to the first episode of Curtain Call. We're going to start this thing off with the most recent movie that's come to the old Greenbelt Theater. In this short segment, I'll give a spoiler-free review of The Greatest Showman, a name that sets up a heck of a lot of expectations. The Greatest Showman is brought to you by the same people who did La La Land, the movie that tried to make musicals Oscar bait again by pairing the two things the Academy loves best. Decades-old classics... A-list actors who can't sing or dance. This movie draws its source material from Phineas T. Barnum, the man responsible for over a century-long reign of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, which just closed its doors last May 2017. He never escaped criticism during and following his life, but his character completely escapes criticism in the film. This movie stars the lovable Hugh Jackman, breaking into song almost as much as he did in Les Mis, starting as a child in a similarly down-on-his-luck part. The movie doesn't dwell on his tough upbringing and pretty much skips through all of the tragedy that befell him with a love song about hope. In a way, this is fine because the entire conceit of the movie is about bringing people joy keeping hope alive, and embracing what makes you unique. But it does undercut the emotional journey he had to go through to become the titular character of The Greatest Showman. And in avoiding that, they take away a lot of the audience's emotional journey as well. One thing it definitely never does is dwell on his faults. But I'll get to that later. First, what I want to focus on is what the movie does well. As I mentioned, this is a movie about joy, and it never shies away from telling us that. Over and over. And I will give it credit. I do believe it succeeds in doing that. It is all about diversity, humanity, and hope standing up in the face of ignorance and fearful hatred, something I believe the creators of this film recognize the country needed. It humanizes the characters of P.T. Barnum's oddities by giving several of them real and relatable personalities. What it also does is turn Barnum's character into an idealized version of how privilege can be used to benefit those who aren't afforded the same privileges, simply based on their appearance. It also has several poignant moments where we see that despite these people being outcasts of society based on rare physical conditions, the people who are treated even more like outcasts are the otherwise completely physically normal black characters. This is a painful but important reminder of the way this country has framed blackness in order to escape the crushing guilt of recognizing their humanity after centuries of nonstop mistreatment. Without giving too much away, there's an emotional interracial relationship that develops between two of the characters, something I saw as a strong aspect of the film despite it being predictably cheesy at times. It's a musical. <laughs> Another really strong aspect of the film is the choreography. The dancing is beautiful. However, it tends to fall into the trap of cinematography and editing overload when it gets to big cast numbers. Stage musicals are seen from one angle, so the focus is on making the choreography dynamic enough to keep it entertaining. And movie musicals never seem to think that's enough. So they add in a million angles and close-ups during parts where it could be just as entertaining to see the spectacle from one or two angles. That's not to discredit the cinematography of most of the film, which was gorgeous and capitalized on what made La La Land good. The lighting, costumes, choreography, and camera work together in perfect harmony to create a lot of captivating and memorable scenes. There were also some great lines of dialogue that gave the movie its heart. No one ever made a difference by being like everyone else. One of my favorites that I kept thinking about while writing this script was a line where Barnum points out the irony of being a theater critic who doesn't find joy in the theater, to his biggest detractor. I think that's an important note to all critics. You don't have to enjoy everything you see, but you should try to find joy in the artistry of your subject, whatever that may be. And I have no complaints about the talent of the performers, a lot of great singing, acting, and dancing throughout the film. I was especially impressed with Kiala Settle, who played the role of Letty Lutz, the bearded woman. 
Now we get to the negatives. The first thing I want to say is the songs in this film were not all that memorable. Probably the best one is the one from the trailer. I am not a stranger to the dark. Hide away, they say, because we don't want your This is the life I promised you. They definitely didn't do much for me, but they aren't bad enough that they detract from the otherwise memorable scenes. One of the most glaring negatives was that this film focused way too heavily on P.T. Barnum's clearly fictional character. The film paints him as having relatively no flaws, and if there is one, it's that he's too ambitious. It glosses over parts where this could be a real flaw and shows any consequences as being out of his control or the fault of someone else. In Barnum's real life, he was a much more complicated man, both progressive and hypocritical, a snake oil salesman with a good heart, someone whose life would make an extraordinary character study if they used a more accurate version of the complex man in this film. This is odd, considering the whole film is so focused on his character at the expense of many of the other interesting characters. Even knowing nothing about him, without any flaws, he comes across more as an idea than a man, which begs the question, why not make this more about the characters who create the circus itself, rather than about his idealized life? Sure, he's the force that draws them all together, and that's commendable, but this film would be nothing without the lovable group of misfits who perform for audiences of people who have treated them like dirt their whole lives for being different. I don't see why they didn't call the movie The Greatest Show instead, which is what Barnum and Bailey's always sold itself as anyway. All in all, this movie is a fun and joyous piece of fluff that avoids emotional depth by making its protagonist flawless and all the adversity the characters face seem trivial. And yet, you'll probably still enjoy it a lot. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode of Curtain Call.